So here we are with a video on tying the green white punk streamer. Um, I had my doubts on doing a video like this because <clears throat> at the end of this video a lot of people will laugh and uh, will absolutely notice that I'm not uh, I, fly tying is not my hobby. I really hate it, but uh, <clears throat> because of my videos with uh, catching pike on this uh, green, uh, fluor green white, as they call it, punk streamer, I got a lot of questions on can you do a video about uh, tying that streamer. So I decided uh, uh, to do so, and uh, well, here we are. Um, if we look at streamers, the first thing which is important is, uh, is hooks. And during the years I had a lot of experience with all different brands and types of hooks. And um, I still use a few of them. Um, sometimes I use this uh, Gamakatsu LS5013F in the size 60. Um, When I started building streamers, because I couldn't find the streamers uh, in the tackle shop, the type of streamer that I uh, actually wanted to, to have, I started building them myself, tying them myself, and I started with this hook and up until now I still use it, but looking at this, at this hook, I think you can see it over here. I can make some remarks on this. First of all, I think there is no ideal hook. Uh, whatever kind, brand of type of hook you use, you will still lose pike, miss pike, etc. Uh, let's say about five, six, seven years ago when I started fishing from a belly boat with uh, this type of streamer. Um, it wasn't a problem catching pike and they uh, were absolutely not afraid. They took it all the way and hooked almost everything that took the streamer. But after a while there were more and more people fly fishing for pike and it became more difficult. Um, and I lost a lot of pike, especially during autumn in winter time. Looking at hooks, I noticed that if you push on a hook like this, it actually bends over a little bit. And then that the point of that hook might not penetrate as good as you would like it to, to be. This is a type of limerick hook, actually a U-shaped hook with a long shank. And that's important to me because I want that the point of that hook somewhere in between the middle and the end of the streamer. And that's a big advantage of this type of hook. It's quite long. But nowadays, I adjust it just a little bit like this. Be careful with it. Bend it just a little bit. And then you'll see that I think you can see it now a little bit better. There's a kind of angle in that hook, and if I pull the hook now, the penetration of the point of the hook is much, much better. So I still use this type of hook, but then I bend it just a little bit, and uh, I think that there is no ideal hook available on the market. Quite strange. Um, there's another disadvantage on this hook, and that's the type of barb. It's a little bit too far away from the point and too big to me, so I adjust that also just a little bit. But it's I still use that hook. It's quite sharp and it stays really sharp. I did a lot of tests with Partridge, with uh, RX, with all kinds of brands. And sometimes you might think this hook works better because when you lose a few pikes, you switch over to a different brand and suddenly you, 
you land a few and then you might think that hook is better but in the end bottom line you still will lose pike on that hook too so nowadays <coughs> i use a lot of this type of hooks and that's the trown river hook and i don't know if they have several types uh, but this is a 6-0 and the type number is 6210060060. This is not sponsored, so it's just letting you know what I use because uh, I know that these questions will come. But looking at this hook, you see that it's already bent with the point to the, the eye of the hook. The shank is a little bit shorter than with the Kamakatsu, but it works for me. So nowadays, most of my streamers are tied on this, this hook. I'm not into fancy vices, expensive tools, because this is not a hobby for me. It's, it's only necessary to build streamers, and that's the reason why I have a vice, why I have a scissor, but then a cheap one, uh, not a golden one or whatever. Uh, this piece of equipment and of course you need some some how do you call it uh, line or thread to to uh, tie these streamers and i bought this type it's uni stretch 30 yards one times two seven c white made in china don't know what it is bought it by mistake because i think it's not meant for tying streamers i think uh, fly tires use this for something else but the nice thing is it's very very strong and that's important to me uh, because it's it's really uh, crap if you are tying a streamer and, and the thread uh, breaks so we'll start with a little bit thread over the hook cut this off And then I use not uh, varnish, uh, fly tying varnish, because it dries, it has a quite long drying time and it has to go fast by me, for me. Uh, so I use simple super glue. Um, it dries really fast, it's, it's quite strong. I think it's stronger than, uh, than that fly tying varnish and strong is important to me because I want a streamer to, la to last as long as possible. And for that reason, I only use synthetic material simply because it's, it's stronger than all these uh, natural furs, etc. And there's another big advantage to synthetic material and that it doesn't absorb any water and it doesn't become heavy. And that's important because if a pike wants to take that streamer, he opens his mouth. And if you're using a streamer from a natural material like uh, bucktail or zonkers, uh, rabbit skin or whatever, that will absorb water, become a little bit more heavy than a synthetic streamer. And if the pike opens his mouth, he creates a kind of a vacuum and he has to suck in that streamer all the way. The moment it stays in the tip of its mouth, it's really difficult to get that hook in because everything is hard over there. So synthetic material has the advantage to become to be lighter in the water. And uh, uh, if pike takes it, it's in the back of its mouth often. And that's where we want it to be. So only synthetic material and you can use uh, uh, it's not sponsored or whatever, but it's the only thing I can show you. Uh, the type of material I use is it's this kind of uh, synthetic fur. Uh, you can uh, you can actually use any type of synthetic fibers in the color you like. And for me, it's fluor green with with white. That's the combination that uh, works great for me. So let's make a start. Take some super glue. And I open this bottle and take off the tip because it works better for me. 
And then I have this wooden stick. Take some super glue, put it over. So the thread sticks to the uh, to the hook. And now we'll take some fibers to make the tail of the streamer. Here we are. I think that's the length I want it to be. Oop, there goes the super glue. And here we are, we have a start now. So that's the shape of the tail, but it's too skinny for me, so a little bit of super glue again, some extra material. this to create a kind of a body. <clears throat> so I think that's that tail is okay for me. The length, well it of course it depends on what you want it to be but you can always cut it as long as you want. Make it a little bit longer and cut it in the size that you want it to be. But for me, I know that this is, let's say, 15 centimeters. The whole thing will be about 20 centimeters, but that's, uh, that's okay for me. So now I want to fill up the middle section of the streamer. Super glue again. Some extra material. And everything I cut off, because it's too long, I can use it to fill up that middle section. Always take a look on the back side of the streamer, because what you often see is that there's not enough material over there and I want to fill it up just a little bit. Synthetic materials always have a kind of a bend in it and I put it like this. because I want that streamer not to be perfect shaped but I want to have that punky look and the reason is quite simple if you tie it like this then that streamer will be will have some kind of resistance in the water and starts wiggling a little bit and that's actually what I want to achieve with tying it like this. And I know that most of that artists that have a hobby in our hobby in flight tying wanted to cut it like a women's dresser does, straight, perfect, perfect shaped, 
to me it's not necessary don't I don't do it I actually especially want it to be like this because I know that if you put it if you have it in the water pull the line it actually wiggles uh, in all kinds of directions and that's some extra uh, reason for the pike to follow that streamer because he think it's it's a wounded fish <clears throat> okay I think that the middle section is almost complete put a little bit extra on it and the producers of uh, glues are very happy with me because I use a lot of these super glues it all comes from China I think there are only a few factories that produce this stuff but there are all different brands all, all kinds of prices just buy the cheapest in a hardware store or it's everything is okay well that's about the tail and the middle section and I will move to the white color with the middle section of the streamer again there's some super glue Split this in two parts, one to the left, one to the right. And by splitting it and bending it over backwards, it gets a different direction. And that's what I want to achieve. So, extra super glue because this is too long cut it off and put it on same thing over here The length is not so important, but again, I don't cut it in all in the same length because I want it to move wiggling through the water. Pay some extra attention to the downside of the streamer because there's always not enough material over there. That's my experience, the way I tie these streamers. It already looks like the green and white punk streamer from my movies. But I need a little bit extra white now. And fill it up to the eye of the hook. Again, some extra attention for the back side of the streamer.
know that a lot of purists, fly tying people will laugh about this again, but it works for me. Almost there. That looks okay to me. So now I'm going to seal the top of that streamer. And finally, just to be sure that the thread will stay there, a little bit super glue on the thread. I didn't like this. Cut it in shape just a little bit and that's not so important, but to me, this is okay. Well, super glue just dries by uh, react reaction with moisture, so a little bit breath will bring it some extra moisture to that super glue, and it dries really, really fast. Well, that's it. Here we are, my green white punk streamer. Very successful to me. Simple to tie. You can do it within five minutes and in a uh, tying session for me i try to do let's say about 10 of these uh, these guys and then i can that will, they will last at least uh, for three to four months so that's it for now um, do with it whatever you like laugh about it it's okay for me it works for me simple not expensive, no ice, no extra tuli like, for example, uh, yellow sparkle, or uh, you, you can add it, and that's okay for me, and it looks quite attractive, but my experience is that it doesn't bring any extras. Sometimes I use some feathers, I think it's from chicken, and then paint it. That's also strong material, but nowadays I hardly use it anymore. So for now, that's about the tying the streamers, and I really hope it works for you. Thanks, and I wish you a lot of success with it. Till the next time.